Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all about the user input routing on the Behringer X32 and the Midas M32 on the new version 4 firmware for the console. If you're brand new to my channel, I am all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. So when the Behringer X32 was initially released, it did routing in blocks of eight, meaning that I would be able to route block one through eight from a either local or an AES-50 or something like that. But if I was wanting to have, say, only four microphones coming from the local and the rest coming from a stage box, unfortunately, I would have to burn four inputs for that block of eight. And we can see that by going to routing and we can see local one through eight, local nine through 16. So if I was wanting to select one of these other options, I would only be able to route in blocks of eight. But in the new version four firmware, that is no longer the case because we can use user input routing. So if you don't have version four on your console, go ahead and check out how to update in one of my other videos and you can put version four on your console. And then you will have the access to this user input routing. Once you have version four installed on your console, if you page all the way over to where it says user, we have all of these input settings. Now, the benefit of this is I can route one channel at a time. So if I wanted to have, say, channel one come from local and channel two come from AES-50, I can do that. I can go input one and I can go local in one. And then I can go to input two and I can have this from AES-50A, either one or two. And so we can now see that I have input one coming from local in one and input two coming from AES-50A input two. So the benefit of this is it allows us to take all of our inputs that we want to have on our channels and put them there. The practical option of this is say that you have a 32 channel stage box up on stage, but you want to have your four wireless microphones sitting right next to you at front of house. What we're going to do is we're going to take all 28 channels from the stage box up on stage and then leave four inputs available to us for plugging those microphones in here on the console locally that's just sitting right next to us. So let's go ahead and actually do an example of that. So what we're gonna do is I'm first going to have my inputs one through 28 coming from AES50A one through 28, being my stage box that's up on stage. So I'm going to go to one and I'm going to go and select AES50A one. And then I'm gonna go two and I'm going to make, it, make sure that that's selected on two, three, four, and so on. Now we have these last four channels here available to us. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and plug those wireless microphone receivers into our console, and then we can just route those to these last four inputs. So we can either do a number of a couple things here. We can either plug them in to 29, 30, 31, and 32 on the local side of our console, or we could plug them into one, two, three, and four on the local of the console, or, we could even use the auxiliary inputs. So we can go ahead and select from all of those. So on my 29, I'm gonna have this on local one. If I was wanting to select local 29, I would just go and simply select local 29. Or if I had plugged that into my auxiliary in, I can go ahead and just select aux one. But in this case, we're going to do local one, two, three, and four. So now what we have is 28 inputs coming from the stage box on the AES-50A side, and then we have four inputs of our wireless microphones coming from local on this console. Now let's go ahead and get all of these channels actually routed into our faders here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna page back all the way over to input, and then we're going to select user in one through 32. Once we have done that, we wanna make sure that our routing for our expansion card is also coming from this. For instance, if you were wanting to multi-track record, then we would need to have our user routing also going to our expansion card. So we can tab over to card and have this selected on user in one through 32. 
So we can see here on our X Live card, we have all of our inputs coming from AES 50A, except our last four are coming from local in one through four. Now another practical example of this is say you had multiple 16 channel stage boxes up on stage, and then you also had an X through two full size or a compact sitting here at front of house. That's more than your 32 inputs that you have available to you that you can actually use on the console. So we have to just pick and choose which inputs we're gonna be using. But say our drum set was using 12 of those 16 channels on our A snake, and then the rest of the band was on the B snake, and then we had some local channels that were here on the physical X32. How would we route that? Well, again, we would be going to the user input routing. So let's go ahead and do that. Since we already have our expansion card set up here, and my input routing set here, then I'm just going to update my user input routing on the user input page. So we're gonna tab all the way over until we get to user, and we're going to scroll all the way back up to the top, and we're going to route our channels as needed. So we have one through 12 coming from AES 50A, one through 12, and then we have the rest of our band coming in on our B stage box, which starts at one through 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and select those right now. So on input 13, I'm going to select one and go through and select the rest of my 16 inputs on this stage box. And then our last two would be two wireless microphones that we have locally here on the console. And so I have plugged those into the auxiliary ends because that was an easier connection. So I'm going to go and select aux one and aux two. So now we have all of our channels routed as we need. So AES 50A 1 through 12 being our 12 microphones from the drums. And then we have the rest of our 16 channels coming in on AES 50B 1 through 16. And then we have our very last two inputs coming from our auxiliary ends here on the console. So as you can see, you can piecemeal whatever routing you're looking to do using the user input section. So this is a very, very flexible and better way of routing things than previously with just the blocks of eight. I hope this video was helpful for you for today. If you happen to have any questions or if you have any videos that you're hoping that I would make a video on, please post them in the comment section below as I'm always looking through those comments for suggestions on future videos that are going to be helpful for you. If this video or any of the other videos have been helpful for you and you're looking for a way to say thank you and give back to me, consider becoming a member of my channel as that is a perfect way of being able to help support me and this channel with all of the video content that I'm creating for you. And if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button as that will get all of my videos that are weekly coming out into your inbox every single time I publish a new video. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much.